Hello and welcome to The Good, The Scars and The Rugby brought to you by Vodafone. Uh, this week we are at the Twickenham Stoop, which uh, if you haven't been here, is a great rugby pitch, very close to Twickenham, but this is not Twickenham, this is Harlequin's home ground, home turf. We were in Leicestershire just the other day in Emily's Hood, um, and so now we're in my postcode. Welcome uh, welcome on down to Thank South you. West London. It's very nice. It is very nice, and it's a beautiful day. Uh, we actually had tons of sunshine, even though it is minus 15, <laughs> um, or it feels like it in any way. Um, we are here to talk about Emily and what kind of roommate she is, because we have Amy Cocaine. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <coughs> need to tell the truth. <laughs> England and Harlequins <laughs> hooker. Jeremy Kyle, right? <laughs> yeah. We're airing our grievances now. Um, also, only the third person ever to score a hat-trick in a Rugby World Cup final. Yeah, Go so on. I know. Also, the only person to ever score a hat-trick against Black Fence. I've done it twice. So. Oh. <laughs> oh, you know. There gonna, we go. Just going to do that there. I love this. <coughs> Born and raised in the land of the long white cloud. I've now said it. I mean, Emily did say that this is the thing that everyone wanted to talk to you <laughs> yeah. about for eight straight weeks. Yeah, I had a lot of media. It was like, yeah, competition. I beat Emily every time. And a, your rank in the military is lieutenant officer. Flight lieutenant. Flight yeah. lieutenant, sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. Sorry, there's, there's an officer in there somewhere, right? Yeah, like I'm an officer and that's my rank, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't speak military fluently. No, that's fine. Sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah you, you got it right in there. I'm, I'm somewhere there. Yeah. Okay, so you're relatively seriously important in the military. You are the, bo <coughs> you are the boss of people in the RAF. Not currently because I'm obviously doing rugby at the minute, but mm. um, eventually, yeah, I, would, I will be someone's boss, <laughs> which is quite scary to think, but yeah. How bossy is she, really? Super bossy. Really? No, not actually super bossy. She's quite chill. But if she wants something doing, then... I like it's... efficiency as well. Yeah. If something needs doing and there's a way to do it quickly, let's just get it done. I don't, and I don't the, like the, the way of asking for it to be done will be the shortest way possible. So we mm. did have a little skill session earlier out on the pitch. Um, you were pretty good, actually. Well, the we'll efficiency, you up. The, the efficiency and the directness with In which you handled that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I did feel like first-person experience of just you know getting stuck in there, one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. What is it about rugby that you enjoy doing? If you could just go off and be someone's boss in the military, why are you here doing this? I think um, it's probably a rare opportunity, isn't it? Not many people get to do this, um, and you don't get to do it for very long. Um, so why not? I can always have my military career afterwards, so best of both worlds, I suppose. But you're technically having them both at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> best <not>? of both. <laughs> yeah. And you are third generation in the military as well. Yeah. So did you always just grow up thinking, I'm going to follow in dad's footsteps? No, not at all, actually. Um, I, when I was at high school, I wanted to be a doctor when I was in New Zealand. So I did all the sciences, got proper nerdy at school, was like, yeah, I'm going to be a doctor, and then decided to move back to England. and play rugby instead. So. I could not imagine you as a doctor. Uh, yeah, but I could imagine you as a surgeon, like a trauma yeah. surgeon, yeah. Yeah, not yeah, a GP. Yeah. No, no, it wouldn't be a GP, no. no. Not bothering with coughs and colds. No, definitely no. not. No, no you'd yeah, just like cut like... people open. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give me some broken bones and he's fixed. Yeah, definitely. Cutting people open, um, are you on the inside more Kiwi or more English? Because what that's question. like a, well, I mean, you. how much of your child did you spend living down under? Yeah, from the age of nine to 17. Yeah. But obviously when I was, when I was younger, I moved around a lot. So um, even before we moved out to New Zealand, the longest I'd lived anywhere was like two years. So mm. um, yeah, moved around quite a bit. Um, even went to Northern Ireland, you know, my brother and my dad were all like in Germany and stuff as well. So yeah, moved around, but definitely English, yeah. So when you were down in New Zealand, were you the English girl around there? Yeah, I was, yeah. Well, at the start I was, and then I picked up a Kiwi accent, which I've luckily lost again. There's now. an amazing video that did the rounds when we were out there of this yeah. tiny miniature Amy that's got this. I'm not going to pretend to do it, but it's got this <laughs> amazing Kiwi accent. And she, is it an interview you're doing or something? Yeah. So there's like a TV program called Small Blacks um, out in New Zealand, and yeah, we were on it one week. It was so good. Small Blacks featuring Amy Cocaine. She literally yeah. looked the exact same, just a bit smaller. Just smaller, yeah. Tiny bit. <coughs> Tiny bit smaller. Tiny bit smaller. It was very um, can you, did, did you feel yourself lapse back into a Kiwi accent when you were surrounded by it? Sometimes I do find myself, when I'm talking like to Kiwis, that I'm 
pick up a little bit. I'm like, oh no, I need to <laughs> rein back in my English accent. But it was actually quite funny when I moved back over. Um, Gary Street, who was head coach of England at the time, was like, if you want to play for England, you need to lose. You need to Did lose that Kiwi you? accent. Yeah, he's like, you're from Litchfield. Get your Brummie <coughs> accent back. So um, yeah, I quickly lost the uh, Kiwi accent, and now I have this neutral. Is he being serious or is he joking? I don't know. <laughs> Lost it though. It's gone. Yeah. It's it's gone now. Words spoken in jest. Yeah. yeah. Threw that away. Got my cap for England, so you know we win. <coughs> okay, that's so interesting good. because you do, to me, have a relatively neutral accent. Like yeah. I can't place no. it at all. But it's a bit bizarre because people go, "Oh, where are you from?" And I don't even know where I would even say I'm from because, like, I've lived a lot of time in, like, let's say, Litchfield, and that's like where my parents live now. That's where I would call like home, but. I was born in Ipswich, but I was only there for like a year of my life. I've never really been back since. So like, it's weird, isn't it? Every now and again, you get a Brummy twang. Mm. Brummy, we'll go there. Midlands, Midlands Ooh. massive. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, the prospect of going to play a tournament in New Zealand must have always been something like, when did you become aware of this opportunity being somewhere on the horizon? Is it something that you were like, oh yes, that's the one I want to play in? Um, it was a bit of a weird one because I was a little bit unsure how the like New Zealand people were going to embrace it because mm. I was obviously I've played out there and we'd have like zero fans in the crowd um so it was a bit like I hope that the New Zealand population really buy into it mm. um which they did and it was an amazing tournament and obviously New Zealand's so rugby mad anyway they're probably always going to put it um on a good tournament so yeah they smashed it in the end didn't they wasn't, that, wasn't bad yeah their final was phenomenal yeah how big was the growth that you saw from the start of the tournament and from what you expected and had feared to that experience of being there and that occasion in the end? Well, I think that opening game when they said it was sold out and then you, we were sat yeah, there it and it wasn't. was like half empty and we're like, well, if mm. this is sold out, it's a bit rubbish. But then obviously the final was sold out and it was sold out, like you couldn't see an empty seat in the house. So yeah, the fact that we, that kind of transitioned from first game to last mm. game to, to see the difference, um, yeah, it was huge and it was amazing. It was like walking out, even like during the game, like the scouts were trying to tell us stuff on the pitch, couldn't hear her. We're like, yeah, sounds great. Yeah, just keep doing what we're doing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I'm so was glad a, the message yeah. got across. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wise words were said, definitely. But yeah, no, it was definitely an experience, wasn't it? Well, I've never played in front of that many people before. Um, yeah, it's class. So hopefully we can replicate that. Um, Come 25. Yeah, definitely. I reckon does we can get you, it soon. Do you, does it give you hope that we can sell out Twickenham if, like, if we're in the final? Yeah. Because I don't think, when people said that before, I was yeah. a bit like, yeah, all right. Yeah, not going to happen. Pipe dream. But then actually yeah. playing it in a full Eden Park, coming home um, and obviously seeing all the sport and stuff, I was then a bit like, oh, this could oh. actually happen. Yeah. Yeah. And we've got like two and a half years to like build on that as well, haven't we? Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how many we get for the France game, mm. Six Nations. Yeah. So is there a starter kit? Is there a how to score a hat-trick in a Rugby World Cup final? <laughs> could you boil it down to a few crucial tips that all of us could just follow? Have uh, a good seven of the Yeah, forwards. I was going <laughs> to say, they weren't like magnificent tries. They would just get on the back of the, uh, the old driver more, which uh, <coughs> scored quite a few of them for England now. So um, yeah, I'm just lucky I get to be the little rider at the back. No real skill. You're involved. the rudder. You're like... <laughs> <laughs> Just holding on, not pushing that hard either. You yeah. know, don't want to trip over. <laughs> yeah. And then make sure you put it over the try line, not the five metre line. Yeah, yeah be so that, be there that was, person. The one where I had to like put my arm through the middle it was because I couldn't see the line. So then it was just weird. You just, I had to just saw the line. Yeah, I couldn't see the line. It's actually a hard skill. People are surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen people that have randomly just found themselves at the back and then they, they've not, not done it properly. And you're like, well, you've... That's meant to be an easy try. And it's a lot of pressure because everyone's going, we're doing the, the heavy lifting here. You need yeah. to just place the ball. You've got one job. Just get that spot on. Even one in the final, I thought I'd nearly dropped it because as I went to go down, Sadhu's boot was there. I nearly dislodged it. And I was like, wait, <laughs> that was only really bad because she fell over as I went over. Oh, that would have been bad. So you've got to pick your space, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Not if you break off, you've got to score. That's yeah. always one there. Yeah, definitely. That's a back I hear often. 1.7 million people watched it. Does it feel now that you've come home? Do you feel like you've had a bit of like anecdotal experience from enough people? Like, does that feel like a real number? <laughs> That's insane, isn't it? 1.7 million. Well, we were saying on the day, the final one, the amount of messages we had saying like yeah. good luck and stuff from just like pure strangers was insane. Like, always wanted to just put the phone aside because there's no way you could have read all them or replied to all them anyway. Mm. So um, yeah, could definitely like feel the support. So 
1.7 mil, yeah. Not, not a bad number. Where were you on the white wall? I can't recall now, because I know uh, like Skaz and Santa had the stair off in the middle. Oh, I was, I was the far, far end. end. Far end. Me yeah. and Berna got entrusted with being the ones that wouldn't move. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, because we, we wanted to like obviously not move until they moved. Mm. So we needed some brave people on the edges. Two strong-willed people on the edges, yeah. Yeah, so and because I'm on the end of the anthem line anyway, it just made sense. But we're yeah. going with it that I'm brave. <laughs> could you yeah, you're brave. <laughs> could you, could you see the hacker properly? Yeah. You could. Fine. I had to like step forward a bit though, because I couldn't see Berna. And then I was like, yeah. I don't want her to move first. Because I was the entrusted one, wasn't I? Oh. Yeah. Again, <laughs> once again, a lot of pressure. Right yeah. there. Yeah, but they didn't actually wait for that long, did they? No, no. no. I they feel were, like they just they weren't interested in that thing. Yeah, yeah, fair. But it made us feel better. Yeah, we felt good. Yeah. And then, um, how much Tommy tourist advisory work did you do for the, the outside of all the media engagements? I, I mean, your roommate says you were just doing all of the interviews <laughs> all of the time. Yeah, um, to be fair, my dad actually did a lot more than I did. He made like a little presentation for all the friends and family, <coughs> a little. PowerPoint that he presented to them over Zoom a couple of weeks before. So cute. He did, he did like a North Island one and then all the friends and family were like, yeah, but what about the South Island? What about Queensland? Yeah, but um, you never lived Queenstown. down there, did you? Yeah. No, but he could, he could do the brief still, but it was more he didn't think people had enough time to like, if you, it's quite big, isn't it, New Zealand? So, so then the next night I had to do a South Island one. So um, I was more just, these are what the supermarkets are called when people want to buy chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> What, what yes. to get? <laughs> yeah. Get yourself to count down. And or... when we were all started to say Wang Array, she was like, no, guys, no, no, guys, yeah. guys, 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 guys. Yeah. So but I mean, there wasn't, there wasn't change in much people's no. pronunciation. <laughs> just forget you heard it. <laughs> you were just like, just walk away I'm just going to pretend this yeah. didn't happen. A, yeah. cri a crime against Maori place names yeah. being committed every five seconds. And then you went to Fielding High School with some of the people in the other team in the final. Yeah. So it's quite personal then, that way. I mean, it's not just people you've seen on, like, Emily would have on the Seven Circuit, you know, like, around and about the world. Mm. This, these are friends, Sarah, hearing you? Yeah, like, Gossie obviously went to school with her. The first time I ever got drunk was at her house. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so grew up at, at school with her. Um, Georgia Ponsonby came to high school the year I left, so didn't have much crossover mm. with her but mm. obviously then we were playing hooker v hooker against each other mm. in the final so um yeah strong links with with the field and high community definitely yeah how many times have you been asked that question yeah loads yeah <laughs> well i think because the main thing they all got the black ferns got interviewed and they had georgia gossy and wes who were all three people like wes was like my man or two coach so they all then mentioned me so then all the media was like we want to speak to amy because she got <laughs> mentioned but yeah yeah come on give us the stories you haven't told anyone about her like, is there anything there? Come on. About Gossie? Mm. <laughs> no, no, no stories. <laughs> no, she's she, a good girl, Gossie. We won't yeah. tell anyone. <laughs> no, she's, yeah, she's great. And like, I played rugby with her brother, Simon, um, all through like age grade. Um, he was actually my captain and he was actually the hooker at the time. So I didn't play hooker with him. But yeah, no, some well, great nights out. That's about it. <laughs> have you always played in the forwards? No. What's your journey been like? Uh, when I first started playing rugby, I was like nine slash ten and then moved to centre. So when I first moved to New Zealand, I was actually um, like a centre. Um, slowly moved my way in. <laughs> um, so then went to eight, uh, played eight for quite a bit um, and then learned that I could throw a ball in. So played eight, but threw the ball in the line out and then eventually just succumbed to being a hooker full time. She's got a bit of game, though. Yeah. She's got some kicking skills. I remember the first time you came back to Litchfield yeah. was when you first came back to England mm. and I was at Litchfield at the time and I remember this one session up on the hill under the candlelight that it was at Litchfield and this, obviously this youngster was there just bowling around and I was like who the hell is that and then she like poofs this ball. I'm, I'm not going to claim it was a spiral but poofs this ball and I was like oh we've got this new back in town then is it <laughs> da, da, da. and then I was like who is that girl and they were like oh Amy Kikane she's a hooker from New Zealand and I was like hookers should not be doing that yeah I, like, I actually <laughs> no when Skaz came back from sevens she had a sore toe classic Skaz classic. So, she, <laughs> so she couldn't kick from the post anymore or like for a while because of her toe so I was kicking for post while Skaz was on the pitch and the England coach at the time Fergie was like he used to come watch our games and he used to give us like a debrief after the game and he was like I'm not talking to you until you stop kicking I was like it's not even my choice there's nobody else that can do it <laughs> What so. must you do? I mean, we spoke to Sophie Degoody the other day. 
who yeah. goal kicks and is a forward. Killer. Perfect. Yeah. He's good enough. Exactly. He cares what number you've got in Not even allowed to do it anymore. So, yeah. Any chance you might make a, a, a comeback as the yeah. as a place? I would love to do a drop goal in the game. I think oh. before I retire, I'm going to just do it. I remember once <coughs> when I was playing at Wasps, I was actually just like, if we're winning by loads, can I just try it? I don't think we ever win it by lows. <laughs> What's it move, wasn't it? Yeah. No. Is that is that always you at training afterwards, just quickly bombing a few? Yeah, I I just love it. Like even we went back to training this week. I think one of the first things I did was like a chip and change. <laughs> then got intercepted. I was like, yeah, <laughs> my kind of rugby. This. Didn't you play ten for the RAF not long ago? Yeah, I played ten for the for the Air Force when we beat the Army for the first time. So, like yeah. a couple of years ago. Wasn't yeah, twenty nineteen. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. We so. won. That's the first time we've ever won. So there I we feel go. like some coaches should be listening. I'm just the ten trapped in a, in a hooker's body. <laughs> it's in a hooker's body, yeah. the most physical ten you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> and it was funny because I got I ne- hardly ever get injured, and then when <coughs> I played ten, I got injured, and I was like, classic. Yeah. Talk to me about playing for the RAF. Like, who do you play outside? How does that work? I'm completely like coming out from the outside here. Yeah. So um, we have. The main competition that we have is in services, so where we play both the Army and the Navy. It mm-hmm. um, happens every year. Um, and then, yeah, obviously whoever wins, wins. Um, the Army have won it every single time, apart from in 2019 when we beat them when I was playing 10, obviously. Oh. <laughs> but it, yeah, it's it's like my favourite kind of rugby. It's just so great. It's back to the classic. It's almost like barbarians rugby in a sense that like you have a competition on the pitch, then off the pitch, just like great fun. Yeah. Um, and then obviously we also have the UK Armed Forces, which are sponsored by Vodafone as well, <laughs> which is great. Um, ding, ding, ding. Yeah. ding, ding, ding. <laughs> but um, so then the UCAF um, had their World Cup whilst we were out um, in New Zealand. So that World Cup will always follow now because um, that's the first time I haven't the our World Cup. So whether it is in the world, our World Cup, their World Cup will be the same. That's cool. I don't know if how. they've got a military rugby team. Yeah. <laughs> so oh. like obviously England it will be, but I think oh, it was the next World Cup America. I don't know if they've got a rugby team. But yeah, so it's a super fun rugby and you get to play with people that you wouldn't normally get to play with. I was going to say, where does where do the girls come from that form your team? I mean, are you guys just like getting pulled in from all over? Yeah, so everyone's like based all over the country, really. Mm. Um, and we come together for a few fixtures before. So I think this year we're playing like British Police, which you normally play every year. Um, I think we're playing Leicester Tigers, um, Henley, just games like that, really, to warm up. Um, our producer Shira is uh, is deep in with the Henley Hawks. Oh yeah. yeah, so playing against them. Um, <laughs> it, yeah. But good luck. <laughs> <She's pumped>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's just quite fun rugby. Um, it's obviously like not as se- like it's, it's not professional. It's not as serious, so you can still have that fun. Like, do you not have fun at Quinns? No, obviously have fun, but <laughs> it's different, isn't it? And it's so special as well. Like, not many people get to do it, and um, obviously I'm fully love the Air Force and it's my that's my time to be able to represent them is when, when I get to play in those games. So yeah, it's pretty special. Considering you're a military girl, I'm assuming you're really neat and organized and <laughs> Emily's face is saying No, I was gonna let Amy answer. <laughs> yeah, so uh, is it is it very military where you live in room sharing, for example, with our scares? To be fair, I'm not actually that neat and tidy. I'm not like I'm definitely not like you wouldn't walk into my room and be like, oh yeah, military. No, you wouldn't. No. I was expecting like the ironing board out every evening. Mm. No, I'm not about that. Mm. No, but you do like so Chris much Piles. of that when you're in training. When you get out of training, you're like, yeah, I can relax now. Mm. But I am handy with not an messy. No, I'm not messy. <laughs> she conforms well to whatever. Yeah, I'm a little chameleon. If I need to be messy, I can be messy. <laughs> no. what, did, what, did you need, what did you need to do to adapt to living with her? <laughs> no, I don't. No, it's just different, isn't it? So like, for example, before SCAS, at the World Cup, I was room with Kath and she likes to go to bed like crazy early, gets up crazy early. So we just have different routines, don't we? But we kind of got up similar times. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. We were a good partnership, I thought. Yeah. Put Amy in the far side so that if she did want to throw stuff around, I didn't have to walk past it. Mm-hmm. That's the key. No, that's because she has to get up for a wee in the middle of the night. So she's nearest <laughs> to the toilet. <laughs> that's not the reason. <laughs> <laughs> the old gal can't have it. <laughs> she has to shuffle over in yeah. the dark. Yeah. yeah. And um, and what was the like what was the division of duties? Did you like have I ended up making all the cups of tea. Yeah. I'm not sure how. I um, was like the yogurt person. Yeah, we have like we have like yogurt of an evening. 
I, and we didn't have any bowls or anything, so normally it was out of a wine glass. <coughs> oh, wow. Yeah. But we did have a problem with the fridge, didn't we? We do sound a bit like an old married couple. Yeah, we do. We only roomed for about three weeks as well. We didn't even room for the whole time. No. But we started a programme when Laura Keats was still in oh. town. That was our big thing. What Ma was your programme? Manifest. Okay. Obsessed. We yeah, were. we were obsessed. Did you just have viewing nights? Like, yeah. you, can't, you can't skip ahead of the group. Like, everyone has oh, to yeah, watch no, it. Oh, no, we had to I was like a little guest every night to your guys' room at the start, wasn't I? Yeah. We, well, we initially started watching Married at First Sight, the UK one. Um, <laughs> Tour, it gets really wild. Sometimes. I was yeah, going to say, yeah. <laughs> some really, you know, cerebral... Uh... <laughs> yeah. And then we got somewhere and we couldn't watch it because the internet was too bad, so then we had to start something else. <laughs> Fangarai. Mm. Fangarai. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, out in the countryside. So we started that and it was great, wasn't it? And we, yeah. we actually met up on the... When we came home, we had one episode left, didn't we? And we watched it before we got <laughs> We're back in England. <laughs> We're back in England. We watched the last episode together. So that was good. For old time's sake. Yeah. So cute. What, in the hotel? So cute. Just the three in of you. In yeah. Scatter's like five star suite that she got. <laughs> we basically came back <coughs> and we got put up at the Marriott for a night. Ah. So we had a night in Twickenham, which was good fun. And yeah. then, yeah, before we went out, we watched it. Didn't had we? a little was viewing. It? No, it was the next morning. Next morning. Next yeah. morning, before. little bleary eyed, we watched it. Yeah. yeah. Little hangover. Keats was hanging on for dear life. Wasn't <laughs> she? Keats was not in a good way. <laughs> Should have had yeah. a breakfast beer, just you know, take the edge off. Yeah. <laughs> breakfast yeah. was a fun time with Laurie Keats. Yeah. yeah. What? Well, tough, <laughs> tough going. Tough, tough going. going. Tough start. Bless her. Um, so memories on and off the pitch. What were your? What was your highlight of outside of scoring a hat trick in a final? One of my favourite days was probably when our physio Kate did her mm. marathon out in Fangaray because. It was just fun. We all got to make posters um, and try and like really make the experience nice for her. And it was just a good like day, wasn't it? Yeah, it was really cool. She was basically signed up to do the London Marathon. Um, wasn't part originally part of our New Zealand staff coming away with us. Then got drafted in last minute, so obviously couldn't do the London Marathon. So then she was like, I'm going to run the Fangaray Marathon, which isn't a thing. She just ran a marathon while we were there. Yeah. On her own? Yeah. Oh my gosh. So the staff, the staff did like did stints. Like, they yeah. did like 5K here and there, 10K. Oh. Um, but it was really, it was really cool. It was, really it was like she was doing like different laps around the hotel sort mm. of area. So it was like, okay, in 10 minutes, she's going to be here. We'd all run out of our signs and like had music going. And then like fair play to <coughs> Kenna. She got like a medal, a little trophy. Yeah. There's she... a lot of stuff on social media about it. It was good fun. Yeah. It was and fun. then we checked her in the ice cold pool afterwards. And then we all jumped in. But like great. we were all buzzing, but she just ran a marathon. So yeah. she was literally like, can you? Her legs <laughs> like, had to be held up by like Poppy and stuff. <laughs> Yeah. And you're all like, we are celebrating <laughs> yeah, this. Yeah. Like, whether you yeah. want to or not. Yeah. And then she didn't wear shoes for like five days yeah. after that because oh. the finger feet were a bit sore. But yeah. Gosh. Yeah. No, that, so that was probably my off pitch. That was a good day. On the pitch? I just I just really struggled because where we lost it to have any like highlights from it. You yeah. like it's almost like none of the stuff leading up to the final. Like when we kept bumping into people like, in the airport, like, oh, you must be so proud. We're like, no, I'm not proud. We lost. Like I'm like just like no, don't. I don't. And like even like when we were home, I could see some of the girls and she's like, oh, we're so proud of what we've done. I'm just like, I'm just not. I haven't got that emotion for it yet. Don't feel it yet. Probably never will. But no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> proud. <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? Because I think like when you step back, you can be. But you're right. At the time, and people were saying, oh, it's so good. The final was an amazing final. It was so good you guys were in it. And it's like, yeah, but our such goal was to win the World the Cup. Classic, so actually, such an amazing game. Who yeah. cares? Yeah. <laughs> I would have took a 3-0 win, do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. We had to do media afterwards. And I remember the same thing in 2017 after the final. It was like, oh, it's one of the best finals mm. we've ever seen, men or women. It's like, cool. Cool, get it for the game. But yeah. mm. like, we'd probably rather have a gold medal round our neck. I was going to say. You saying it was yeah. an absolute yeah. shocker. Um, but yeah, it's one of those, isn't it? Could mm. you have been on the other side? Could you, I mean, you, I mean, there is a Don't very... Oh, I, I was in play for New Zealand. Yeah. I mean, if you'd stayed. Yeah, well, I've got like New Zealand citizenship and stuff. Um, obviously, that was kind of like, um, the fact I got sent to the Black Ferns trial was the reason why I ended up moving back. So if I'd never got given that opportunity, I probably wouldn't have made the decision <coughs> at such a young age. Because um, I was like 16 at the time. And I was like, as if I've got to think about this at this age because originally you were going to come back by yourself weren't you yeah so once I'd made the decision to come back I was going to move back by myself and just have a crack at it um and my because my brother went to university in Christchurch at the time 
And then he was like, I hated uni. So he was like, well, if you're going back, I'm going back. So then my parents were like, well, if both our kids are going back, <laughs> we may as well go back. <laughs> yeah. Um, and even our, even our dog Goldie came back in the end as well. So um, yeah, the whole family ended up moving back. But, um, because you decided you didn't want to be a Blackburn. Yeah. Why? I'm English. That was literally it, yeah. That girl. Yeah. And I remember standing up on a table at Litchfield under 10's uh, end of year awards, swearing allegiance. That I would, that Did I would you? Do. Yeah. <laughs> it's on video as well, saying that I'll make sure I play for England instead of New Zealand. So, um, Is yeah. That before you left? Yeah. Wow. So Get my last like, prize given, yeah. So, yeah, I kept my promise and came back and played for England. And, and like, even without like, losing both World Cups, I was still back that decision. I think I wouldn't have the opportunities I have now, being like professional and mm. all that jazz, if, I, if I'd stayed in New Zealand. So definitely the right choice, even though I have not got a gold medal. <laughs> <laughs> One, yeah. day. One day. One day. We just wanted to win it at home. You know? Yeah. Let yeah. the New Zealand have their party. We'll do it next time. <laughs> It is, <coughs> I think that's, that's probably one of the most interesting things about your journey is that you could very well have just gone the other direction. Has your rugby developed differently because you spent some time there? Like, oh, yeah. Like, would you have been a different player had you stay here throughout? throughout? Yeah, because in New Zealand at the time, um, you could play women's rugby whenever you wanted to. So I started playing women's rugby at the age of 13, playing against like Black Ferns. Do you know what I mean? And I was like, in the front row as well. So I remember, so I played for Fobo and our main rival was Kia Toa. And um, they had a black firm prop called Ruth Mackay. And I remember being a hooker at 13, having to like scrummage against her, which would never be allowed over here. No. It's not, it's not allowed. Is it still allowed there now? I don't know. But, um, and then to play like um, in the FPC, I had to get like special dispensation to play in the end because that was like the next level up. But um, yeah, it wouldn't be allowed over here. And then even when I moved back, because I'd played that level over there, over here still had to play under 18s. And I was like, no, there's got to be some way that I can play in the premiership. So I had to get um, special dispensation from the RFU to be able to play in the prem at 17 at Litchfield. I had to sign a little yeah. creepy waiver to say I'm okay to be in the change room with women that might be <laughs> naked. So <laughs> and I'm okay with it. And you're underage. Yeah, my parents had to sign it off and stuff. But um, yeah, that experience of, being a small little 13 year old having to fight your way against top players in the world. You just, you don't get that exposure yeah. over here. That is insane, isn't it now when you think about yeah, it? Yeah, it's crazy. I had to like go to a doctor and is... stuff and that he had to be like, yeah, your musculoskeletal system can hack it and stuff. So all my coaches had to be like, yeah, we believe she's got this. That was when I was doing FPC, but yeah, just normal club rugby for women. So I'd play like club on a Saturday in school on a, on a Sunday. Wow. Which Jeez. again, you wouldn't do over here. Yeah, that just wouldn't. So I used to train <coughs> Like for school on Monday, Wednesday, for club Tuesday, Thursday, play Saturday, Sunday. Saturday, Sunday. So I had Fridays off. But sometimes we used to do like MMA front rowy stuff on a Friday morning. But Jeez. So when you moved here, did you genuinely think everyone was a little soft? <laughs> well, I mo when I moved back, I, I was at Hartbury College. I went there for a little bit. Um, I didn't do any education. <laughs> Different story. <laughs> there for the lifestyle? Um, for the scenery? Well, initially, I went to a Drinking few classes. Tea. I went to a few classes, but I didn't need the... I wasn't going to get anything from it because um, I'd already done all my education in New Zealand. I was just waiting to start university, but I moved back in uh, December. Um, I went to a few classes and the teachers thought it'd be best if I didn't keep coming up, <laughs> keep coming, basically. So I used to just chill out and on the disruptive. day. Disruptive. Disruptive, yeah. But I think it's tough, isn't it? If you know you don't need to know it, why would you care? Anyway, so I used to just drink tea and watch movies during the day at Hartbury whilst everyone else got their lessons and then turn up for training. Do you have an encyclopedic movie knowledge now? Yeah, I'm, I love yeah. movies, yeah. It's insane. I am like a... Could you like recite like chunks of... What's your favourite? Um, I don't know, but at Hartbury we used to watch Frozen quite a bit and we got so bored watching it in English we watched it in Italian. <laughs> <laughs> That is the level of Not, boredom I can't yeah. say I've reached. Yeah, ever. but the songs are really funny in Italian. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But no, I love watching films, yeah. Irritating. It's irritating. Because she'd always be like, oh, yeah, such and such from such and such. And I'm like, I have no, absolutely no idea what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, no reference yeah, whatsoever. No. no. Okay. Yeah. That's fascinating. I didn't think we'd get to Frozen. <laughs> <Yeah. anything>. <laughs> <laughs> well, on the topic of uh, doing things that are unbelievably varied. Uh, 
here is another person, a, a teammate of yours who's just w walked in. Come on, Jade Conkle Roberts to join Woo! us on Woo! the show. Oh, Welcome to the Good Discussion Rugby. Bring the hype. Hello. <laughs> it's nice to see you again. Yeah, nice to see you. The last time I saw Jade, I was at her place of work. Yes. In Hounslow at the fire station. It was Class. a very hot day. You left and it was the busiest afternoon you could imagine. Yeah, literally, <laughs> the siren started going. Some cats were up trees, were they? Or? No, it was, a, it was a big fire day, a big fire day. For a change, it wasn't the cats that was causing the chaos. And we were still rolling, the cameras were there, and the next thing she was just off, and we were like, bye. bye. So Never came back. So. filmed knowing that they might just have to... Well, we. I mean, it was a beautiful, quiet day in Hounslow. I mean, outside of the planes, like yeah. screaming. Yeah. over there the whole time. Uh, the, the, with all the complain spotters. Yeah, it's literally <laughs> right next to Heathrow Airport. Yeah. Um, uh, and then did you have a very busy afternoon? It was a very busy afternoon. So that one we went to just when I said bye to you guys was like a massive shed fire. All the stuff inside was on fire. It was like proper going when I arrived. So by the time we got back, obviously cleaned up and then was straight out again for the rest of the night. Wow. Yeah. Okay, fire Fun fighter. though. Yeah, it was class. Yeah. yeah and right then I think, the sun, eh? yeah, obviously it was a hot summer, so you had so many hot days. I do actually now recall hearing a few uh, fire engines kind of blazing past and going, I wonder if that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> because it was actually, because it was so dry there. It was like 36 <laughs> degrees that day that you guys came. Yeah, so yeah. But there was yeah. also like weeks there where I kept on going, they didn't tell me it was going to be like this. <laughs> no one, no one told me that it gets that hot in London. Oh, well, I don't think it's supposed to. No, it's not. So, <laughs> No. This is more what it's supposed to be like. Didn't you guys have person. unseasonably nice weather in New Zealand as well, where people were like, oh, we thought it was going to be, you know, chucking it down, and it, it was surprisingly sunny. It did chuck sunny. it down. <laughs> I don't, I don't know it was like windy and wet have. loads, wasn't it? was it? temperamental. Well, it's like spring, isn't yeah. it? But there was yeah. like the odd, like, really hot day, and we're like, whoa. I wouldn't I, say really hot. I'd say it was quite windy, so that might have just yeah. made you think it was a bit warmer, yeah. but I was still wrapped up and in all the layers. And we had like four seasons in one day, yeah. regularly, which was bizarre. And if the Scottish girl says she's wrapped up. I'm always cold, though. Always, <laughs> so. Really? Yeah. From the Black Isle? And yep, always cold. I'll have a bit. So at training all week, I wear two base layers, a hoodie, a waterproof. Girl, I my own heart. Oh, have no, you, stop. Have you got a UU bottle? No, you should probably get one. Emily look sleeps <laughs> in trousers all year round. There's nothing wrong with that. That is weird. Do you do the same? Yes, I would. I wouldn't say that. no. Thank you. Oh, oh. I'm not the weird one here. <laughs> I'm not the weird one here. <laughs> what is weird about that? Trousers all year round. <laughs> What's wrong with In the summer, you still cozy. wear trousers. Cozy. No, it's hot. Like a duvet's <laughs> not even needed. Trousers definitely not needed. A duvet's always needed. <laughs> Always. Yeah. No, oh. in camp, you were the weird one. In Don't camp, you? I got a roasting for this. We obviously, like, you share rooms with people, and somehow we got onto what people wear when they go to sleep. Well, when I roomed with you that first oh, yeah. time, like, I was like, <laughs> like yes. Is this what you're saying? Are you settling in now? Is this yeah. it? This is me. Yeah. She has like socks on, hot water coffee. bottle. Oh, nice. But the hot water bottle is a long, thin one, yeah. so you can like. You can put it around you, yeah. you can get more yeah. body. Nothing wrong with that. Well, you need to get one. Sort of. Okay, you want to buy her one? <laughs> it's, well, it's, it's Christmas yeah. every day now. Yeah, so true. Secret Santa would you, would you like a Santa, Santa hat? Sure. You got no, one special we have, like, <laughs> we go. have you done your Christmas shopping? All sorted? All done? Uh, no. No? No. 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 I'll do that at some point. I like to think. That looks good. But I mean, you are juggling quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, I bought one thing online so far. That's it. Black Friday specials? Um, no, but it was a discount, so... <laughs> <laughs> So what's life like uh, these days now that you're back from... As busy as always. Yeah. Still straight. So I think we, I got back on the Thursday night and I was back into work on the Monday. Um, Did you come straight home? Yeah. Yeah. Because a lot of the Scottish girls stayed out and had, yeah, I've seen lots of pictures. Yeah, yeah. Yep, they oh, did. I nearly had they to did. Some of them. Yeah, I was, was like, too much. so gel. Yeah. Yeah, because you guys are still in work mode. Yeah, mm -hmm. we were still in work mode. Obviously, some people would literally come home, and then some people were on the South Island bungee jumping and literally yeah. having yeah. Yeah. Best time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like the best views. They were they were going to mountains. They were going to waterfalls, and I was like, cool. <laughs> I'm I'm cold. Yeah. <laughs> like back home, but nah, um, it's been good. Like, I think it was good to get straight back into a routine, it meant I could get over jet lag and obviously the rugby was still on. So when I was getting up at silly o'clock in the morning, I was just watching the rugby, so it was great. It. Yeah. How did you manage the coming back, <coughs> the sleeping pattern, the getting up at three in the morning, watching the rugby? Like, did you did you find that adjustment coming back into this time zone harder? Um, I mean, my kind of sleep schedule's all to pot anyway with my mm. two days, two nights, four off. So. It was just like I was on another night shift, so it was all right, to be honest. So I kind of got settled pretty quickly. 
and then we just sleep when I can. Do you do your stuff around Quinn's training or Quinn's training is around Quinn's, work? so my schedule is my schedule with yeah. work and then obviously Quinn's training is around that. So if I'm on a night shift, I'll be at Quinn's all in the day and then go to work. And then if I'm on a day shift, I'll get my work done, my like um, stuff done at work or before. And then if I'm off, then I'm at Quinn's all day. Wild. Basically, you are two people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I yeah. guess who works hard, like yeah. some of us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at you <laughs> too, <laughs> Emily. <laughs> um, and then in terms of balancing that, like, do you sometimes look at everyone around you and go, geesh, I mean, they, they could just try a little harder. <laughs> nah, I mean, it's all, it's all relative, isn't it? Like, just <coughs> come in, do what you can. Just because people might not have come straight from a shift doesn't mean they're not tired or they've had several other things on, so... Nah, it's always, everyone's always quite good as well. Like I was at training yesterday and I was post night shift, so I was a bit tired. And yeah, she no, was a bit tired. <laughs> she was. I was a bit hangry, she a bit tired. Um, and people just got it. Do you know what I mean? They're like, that's fine. That's yeah, fine. Away. You can be a bit <laughs> tired. Like, yeah, tired everyone. <laughs> Basically, see a clear. Avoid at all costs. <laughs> if anything, just to hand her warm beverages. Yeah, yeah and pretty much. Stay out of her way for the rest of it. Yeah, yeah to be fair, I think you were just about to eat, so you were going to. Yeah, I was fine after that. I was yeah. fed and then I was all right. I was all right. But there was, a, there was a slight blip when I arrived yesterday and I was like, I'm not in the mood. <laughs> so you were, you were Scotland's first, <coughs> first full-time professional rugby player, but this is now a few years ago. Yeah, and now you managed to qualify for a Rugby World Cup, which is great, and you guys went out there. Yeah. Is it everything you had hoped it would be despite the results outside of that? just the experience of going? Yeah, it was really, really cool. Um, one of the, like my highlights was I, I could be walking down the street and then there could just be several other players from countries from all across the world. Mm. I remember going down the street and then some of the Australians were passing us on a scooter and I was like, how cool. There's just, there's just some Australian rugby players or some of the Kiwis or you bump into some of the England girls just randomly walking down the street of Auckland, mm. um, which was really, really cool. Um, and then people you'd never met before, but you'd spot the kind of branding and it was, you'd have like a hello or something. Um, and I think that was really cool, just kind of seeing how the rugby community is when everyone's together. Um, so it was really cool to have that. And then obviously the opportunity to play in a World Cup as well was incredible. And then hopefully that's us now going to qualify for the next one. Mm -hmm. You never know, but hopefully that's now Scotland on a map. So then the next one we can, you know, compete a bit more. And how is professionalisation going? You guys, you had a change in structure. You have support packages. That was announced just before the tournament, yeah. right? Tailored to individual needs, just aimed at getting as many players to be able to commit as much time as possible yeah. to the national setup. Does that set you up better for the Six Nations coming up? So now, I think as of the 1st of December, I think we handed out 30 contracts. Mm -hmm. So then it's more of a tiered system mm -hmm. um, rather than individual support. So hopefully that means that, you know, a lot more people can concentrate solely on rugby or with slightly less work hours. Um, so hopefully going into Six Nations, that'll have some effect. But obviously, it's going to take longer than a couple of months to actually get the effects of kind of that, what that professionalism is going to be like. But it's a massive step in the right direction. How does that affect you and your work and all that? Um, so I can pro rata my kind of Scotland hours as well. So really fortunate to obviously be offered a contract and try and manage both to an extent. What does that mean, pro rata your Scotland hours? As in like, if I, ca I probably won't be able to make everything to do with Scotland mm. all the time. Mm. So I'd kind of just adjust it as around my work schedule. Okay. Yeah. Is that, so um, you took a sabbatical at one point to qualify yep. as a firefighter. And now you, you're basically being given enough freedom or executive decision making to kind of go, here is when I'm available and yeah. I can do things and I'll keep up even when I'm not there. Yeah, yeah, and um, everyone seems to get that. They're really supportive. You know, you never know when your last game of rugby is going to be and this is going to be my career for the next like 35 years, probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you've just got to, I think everyone gets it, which is good. And everyone's super supportive. The brigade are super supportive. Scotland are supportive. Quinns are supportive. So as long as I'm open and honest and kind of make sure everyone knows what is happening, everyone's in the loop and we're all on the same plan, then everyone seems to be happy so far. It all works. Yeah. At it's the super moment. exciting. I think, you know, we've spoken a lot in the past, haven't we, around other nations. Mm getting more contact time together, being professional, whatever it might be, I think mm. is really exciting. Certainly the girls that are obviously at, at Loughborough, 
I think a little bit they've been a bit like, so what do we do now? Yeah. Uh, we feet her. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Like coffee. Because mm. it's, you know, professionalism, it is obviously sunshine and rainbows very much so, but it is a different way of living. Yeah. Um, and it, in its own way, is quite is difficult because the challenges are difficult uh, or are different from what you're probably used to. Yeah. Louise McMillan, who's signed for Saracens, obviously she's moved down to London. She's just like obviously left her job and she's been so like work, work, work orientated. So it was one Wednesday and I was like, what are you up to? She was like, I, I don't know what to do. And I was <laughs> like, let's go into London. We'll go and see a show. Cause I was off that day. And she was like, I've got so much, so much more time. And I was and like, it embrace it, embrace it. Yeah. yeah. Initially it's quite stressful because you're not used to it at all. Yeah. You feel like you need to be doing something. Yeah. I don't ever have that feeling. Like <laughs> <laughs> You'll just watch quite, Frozen. Quite, yeah. You'll just watch Frozen in Italian. I'm so. happy putting my feet up. You know, having a cup of tea, a couple of biscuits. Yeah, wake up at midday if I fancy it. Oh no, I can do. Yeah, it. I can wake I up at midday. No, no, no late sleeping. <laughs> no. What did you say to me the other day? You didn't get out of your pajamas for four days when you got back from New Zealand. Yeah. You well, can just do that. I didn't put a bra on for four days. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't but fancy I mean, it. I, I didn't literally. fancy it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'd given up by that point. <laughs> but no, I, mean, I, got, I was a bit ill when we came. I think quite a lot of us were a bit ill. <coughs> oh, I well, sorry. I mean, Still yeah. <laughs> coffee, she, cough's an opiate. Yeah, yeah, she's had this cough. Did she Did she have it in New Zealand as no. well? No, but when you got back from... Cabbage Patch Monarch, cough. Yeah. So mm, the allergies going about. Yeah. Sent me a voice that was like, cough, 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 <laughs> cough. And I was like... She picked it up when that night she stayed at Twickenham. And then basically... There we go. Cabbage patch golf. Yeah. <laughs> it was a good night, though. Thing. Um, did you guys have a good time outside of the stuff that happened on the pitch? All of you together, a few weeks in New Zealand. Yeah, um, every there was one a week, one day a week that they kind of put on some activities that we could go to, or you could do your own thing as well, um, which was really good. So obviously, me, I kind of roped in a couple of people to go and visit all the fire stations that I could, <laughs> like the spotter that I am. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What did you do today, Jade? I, spent, I just <laughs> went to some fire stations. I spent a lot of time at Auckland Fire Station, made some friends. <laughs> sat around the mess table, took them for a workout in the gym, took the boys for a workout in the gym. So good. Yeah, got cool. shown around all the trucks. And then when I when we got moved to Fangare, he sent me the number of the guy that worked there. So he picked me up in one of the fire cars, <gasps> um, took me to Fangare station, showed me around. And then when we were in Auckland as well, they would like drop me off a coffee. They dropped me off a coffee to my hotel. It's lovely. Oh, that's wow. cute. It's yeah, like a little secret cute. society. Mm, gave me some t-shirts, so I took them all back from my watch at work. So we've all got New Zealand Fire t-shirts now. Oh, that's oh cute. My gosh. Yeah, real cool. So my try scoring celebration for the World Cup, the the one of the firefighters there so walked the down to our hotel, gave me this hose branch and was like, take that for your try celebration, just drop it off later. So I had like a full blown hose for my try celebration, so then just good. dropped it back off after. So, yeah. I want to know where those videos went because they didn't get used, did yeah, they? Yeah, no, no, I don't think they did. Into the abyss. Well, not that I scored a try anyway, but it would have been a great try. <laughs> <laughs> celebration. But also the fact that you managed to make um, good enough friends with people at fire stations in other countries so that they can yeah. drop off some kit for you. Yeah, I literally mm. just uh, knocked on the door and was like, can I have a tour? Mm -hmm. And he was like, yeah, come back up this afternoon. So I did, and then I pretty much never left. So... <laughs> Mental. Yeah. And madness. Well, mm. I mean, if there is a rogue announcement coming through at any point that Jade Conkle Roberts is taking up a contract in New Zealand <laughs> yeah. for a short yeah. while, no one will be surprised. Well, they did get it passed that if they got an incident the night that I went up for a couple hours, I could go on the truck with them, but it, they didn't get one while I was there. And I, I was like, do I hold on for longer? And I was like, I'm going to be here all night at this rate. That is unbelievable. So cool. You literally cannot help yourself. No, I know. It was great. It was great. You just and, like, get... Yeah, took them for a session in the gym, obviously made it super hard and um, let's just watch them suffer in the gym it was like keep going you got this who went with you uh jody retty came sarah bonner came leah bartlett came up one day sat around the mess table having a cup of yorkshire tea yes. uh, so good that's brilliant yeah yeah it was good but other than that went to some waterfalls in actual new zealand you did see Didn't them yeah. Yeah. Seen, some, yeah. seen some waterfalls yeah. um i hate the sea but i went on a paddle board you hate Ooh. the sea. Yeah, I don't well. like water really. Oh, can't really swim. It's more of a fire gal, you yeah. Know? Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna yeah. say. Yeah, I don't, don't really like being in the water. Wow. <laughs> yeah, but went paddle boarding because I got forced to. Um, by my friends. I got forced. So, yeah. yeah I feel like I feel like I don't know how anyone forces you to do anything. I'm really soft. Really. You just be like, come on, and I'll be okay. Okay, right. okay, okay. None of us fell in either. None of us fell in. You stayed dry. 
Uh, we jumped in after yeah. because everyone was jumping in, so obviously you can you just have to. got to jump in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Peer pressure. It's a bit panic. It's a bit like when you come to the stoop and you just have to scrum Amy cocaine, as you do. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it's yeah. Happens. It's a welcome ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, come on here, let, let someone just teach you a lesson quickly and put you in your place. This was me earlier. Nice. You should never. Um, I won't. Thank no. you. No, no. We oh. were actually talking yesterday about how Jade played prop a couple of times. No, I got made to prop in training the yeah, other day. She was complaining about it. We were missing a loose head prop, and they were like, "Jade, you just step in against Briny Cleal." I was like, oh. "Sorry, what?" Yeah. She was very kind to me. Every time she would pick me back up off the floor because obviously I just kept end up face planting. She was very good. She kept picking me up. I was front row. Is a lovely. Again. Lovely people. I respect the front row. Yeah. After having that very brief, ridiculous stint there. I've got a whole f newfound respect. I think there's a bit in that. I was saying to Amy earlier, I've been playing nine in training this week. Oh. Told everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's quite nice. It's good to have an appreciation of what other yeah. people go through. It's going to have a sore now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you're quite lanky and tall. I am. I'm not built for a nine at all. You're but like a Mike no. Phillips. No. But yeah, point being, it's quite... I mean, there was just screeching and I went one way and they were like, did you hear me? And I was like, well, no. But I'm also that Lay person up. that says to the night, did you hear me? And I, I get it. It's yeah, hard. Yeah, You've got to be fair. very clear. Is, is, are you secretly like, is that the, the, the position you covet? No, I don't. Um, my energy system doesn't lend itself to being no. a nine. No, just my a lot of running. Energy system, just, no. All they do is Stand run and pass the ball. Yeah. And I'm not a cardio girl. They're like, quite good at running those stop. cheat lines as well. I don't think, I think I'd forget about the cheat lines and go oh, loopy. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. Any other position outside of prop that you secretly covered and would love to play in? For Scotland, could? I've played one, four, five, six, and eight. Yeah. Okay, oh, so yeah. basically all of them. Yep. Oh. <coughs> That's I will I never be a hooker. Level as well. yeah. Yeah, yeah. All international. I'll never play hooker though. Absolutely We're the most skillful not. position, so it's quite hard, you know. <laughs> People can't just pick it up. And no, I wouldn't want technical to. Technical position, ass. No arms in that scrum. When that goes yeah. down, that's your face getting it. No, thank you. Uh, and how's how's her shape like as a prop in general? It's, it's I like, think I played against you, you when did. you played prop. Yeah. <laughs> Look at yeah, he's laughing. <laughs> yeah, your technical terms are coming out now. <laughs> I'm just yeah. absolutely like, basking, making it up. Yeah, I'm going true. along. No, we we played Ireland. Um, I think it was 2018, and our prop got a yellow card, and then our other prop got a yellow card, and they're like Jade. You're gonna go to loose head. So I went to loose head and I walked up and it was Leah Lyons that was the tight oh. head. She laughed. She <laughs> laughed when I walked That's up into the prop. And she sign. to this day she's like, I didn't laugh. I'm like, you did. Yeah. So she laughed. I walked up and I was like, I've got to hold this or I'm gonna get carded. And I've never been carded. So and I've never been carded, no. even to this day. No. One in a club game back like when oh, I was like yeah. really young, but other than that, never. And um I held her and then we won the game. So there you go. All, all because of my. But you don't want to do too good a job because no. then, yeah, yeah. Keep, it's yeah. a fine balance. No, I actually decided to lose a lot of weight and then I've never yeah. been put back. So. And there was, there was no chance that anyone yeah. was going to bother with no. trying to make that work. <laughs> no. no. So you guys have um, a big old game coming up Bristol, double hitter. Traditionally, we've always had a two week break. Yeah. And then obviously, you guys having the big game the last few years, it's actually been the only probably time we've broken that up or you guys mm. have so do you eat differently when it's like no no <laughs> i look like i eat differently no i picked the market for breakfast yesterday to be fair. she did she told us all about it when yeah. she came in um no i think you still got the still got the, like we train in until like the 23rd of december mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. there's only so much damage you can do in like three days anyway oh Steady um, on. <laughs> but no i think it's still important and people would say like Christmas is a big family time. Mm, yeah. um, you've got to enjoy it. I wouldn't ever want to be like, oh no, I can't have like, extra pigs in blanket because I've got a game. Like, no. no no risk? Um, I'm always quite busy around Christmas anyway. So I was actually post night shift on big game last year. And then I've got the day off this year. So I'm actually going to enjoy Ooh. some food. I'm off the 25th and I've got annual leave-in on the 27th. Oh, strong. Yeah. Love that for you. Yeah, mm. looking forward to it. What year, does Christmas so. dinner look like for you? For me? Yeah. Uh, what, being a vegan or being Scottish? No, being, <laughs> I was thinking more being vegan. Oh, right, um, okay. So we, there's this bakery in, around like Croydon and stuff. It does this really good vegan Wellington. Okay. So we get that as like the main bit and then just 
the typical everything else. You've got your roasters, so. all your vegetables, and then you get so many good things these days, like vegan puddings and all stuff like that. So it's, it's quite similar, it's just same. without the meat. Yeah, fair enough. But at Wellington, I get pastry. Yeah, I was so. just thinking that. Mm. Mm. It's good. No, I would not give up pigs and blankets for the world. <laughs> You're obsessed. I am obsessed. You mentioned it five times in the last three I've minutes. had them probably like five times since we've been back <laughs> really? from New Zealand as well. Mm. Love them. Pigs and blankets. Oh. Love them. And I saw this video the other day. You cut the sausage open, put some cranberry sauce in it and some brie and then rewrap it in the bacon. <laughs> Tell me that doesn't sound good. <laughs> that does sound good. Doesn't that it? Just... That, is, that is decadent. Yeah. I'll give you that. The one thing I actually just cannot get into is mince pies. My husband keeps mm. buying them and I feel like that's the single most overrated thing about Christmas food yeah. wise. Yeah. I like eat it, but I feel like only because I feel like you should. But I don't necessarily massively enjoy it. Yeah. He's he's buying them from every different place. Like he buys, he, he uh, makes a point. Some people do that. Yeah. Yeah. He makes yeah. a point of trying different ones yeah. and going, "Ooh, these You're ones." Great, I'm great like, great "No, one. none of them are nice." <laughs> like, I hate to break it to you. But I know people who've made spreadsheets about mince pies. Really? They, uh, spreadsheets. And, like so they can rate them and have a oh, like no. a Google sheet. Well, that's, that's a bit too much. Like, with friends. Maybe you could do that on different brands of pigs and blankets, but yeah, min true. mince pies. Interesting. Mm. Are you deep within the decoration game as well? Wow. We haven't got anything at the moment. Ah. To be fair, we haven't had time. Um, so hopefully we'll buy at least a say. little tree at some point because I feel like Christmas might be a bit dire if we have absolutely <laughs> nothing. So yeah. Yeah. keep the Santa hat. Keep the Santa hat. <laughs> Basically, Thanks. we've given you the first step. Thank you. Yeah. I actually bought a Quinn's Christmas jumper at the <coughs> shop earlier. So I also now have a Christmas jumper. So this is progress. Oh, yeah. love that. This is head of the game. Christmas yeah. jumper at the Reedy? Um, I have an Aston Villa Christmas jumper that I normally just wear every year, but nice. not, I don't buy a new one every year. Yeah, good old family. Too tight. Yes, I'm very tight with my money. <laughs> I'm really? <laughs> yeah. Although we used to fight about buying stuff, didn't we, when we were away yeah, at the World Cup? Too, but... And then Emily gave me a stern word <laughs> quite early point, on. We'd gone out for coffee and I'd bought it. And then obviously probably the next time we went out, Amy would buy it, but she'd already transferred me no. Three dollars on Monzo, and I was like, Amy, we can't do this. Yeah, she's the like, entire trip. Let's just alternate, like normal I just people don't do. Like grown ups do. We'll just alternate. I just don't, don't like owing people three money. pounds every just other day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, but you're pounds. gifted yeah. a coffee. You're not owing her it because you're giving it back. No, but yeah. no, but one time you bought like loads of donuts. And it was too much. <laughs> don't know what donuts, Amy. <laughs> yeah. She loves else. a donut. She <laughs> loves a donut. You didn't go to that Dunkin' Donuts. Please tell me you bought no, like no, good no, no, donuts. No. We went okay. to some like hole in the wall place, <coughs> didn't we? That yeah. was nice. Okay, nice. Can't remember what it's called. Mm -hmm. I generally, well, I was there very long ago, but I feel like generally the bakery scene in Auckland. Unbelievable. Absolutely phenomenal. Like anything basically carb based is phenomenal. <laughs> Very good. I don't know if it's just because the weather is so changeable, but they really mm. they've they've nailed that. Yeah. A bit like how South Africa nails anything meat. Meat, yeah. It's mm. like certain things in certain places just absolutely pop off. Yeah, it was good. Um okay. So the cocaine family, what do you do for Christmas? Yeah, I'm going home to my own dad's <coughs> for Christmas. Talk us through the bench press Yeah, I was going to say the bench press competition, yeah. Yeah, so every year, unfortunately, we do... Um, unfortunately? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of losing the love for it, but I know oh. the, the people love it, so we've got to do it. And my dad would never let me not do it anyway. But um, basically, it all started because we used to do fitness testing for England on, like, the 3rd of January or something stupid like that. And um, in it was, like, bench press. And one year, I'd been told I needed to get, like, something on, on bench and my dad was like I bet you I can bench more than you and we are super competitive and this was on Christmas day <coughs> and I went there's no way so then we got up we left Christmas at our house went to Litchfield Rugby Club and did a bench press competition me and my dad unfortunately he beat me but he did put his back out so he's a real winner <laughs> um, <laughs> did the whole family come and watch um so my brother was away at work at the time but yeah my mum came and um my friend George Bradley used to live with us and she she did it as well. Um, <laughs> then now we have a rule that if you want Christmas dinner, you have to get 100 points. So um, we now do your max bench press followed by your max press ups. But it has to be like instant, like re rack it, get on the floor. Um, so you have to get That's at least brutal. 100 points. Otherwise, you're not allowed dinner. How do you get 100 points? Like so if rep? you bench 70 and then do oh, 30 okay. press ups. Got you. Yeah. And we've, we've told like, we always have this joke where like, if he gets a girlfriend and tries to bring her around for Christmas dinner, like she's going to have to get 100 points. <laughs> Can you have a break in between your press-ups? <coughs> like what happens if you bench 70 and then you get like 20 press-ups, but you're like, I can get another 10 just after a break? No, it's got to be straight. straight. Yeah. 
brutal. That's brutal. Somehow I'm not surprised now that you do what you do. <laughs> <laughs> like I feel like now a lot of other things about you yeah. make sense because that level of competitive. So competitive. Yeah. So it's been going for like four or five years now. But no one's ever not got the dinner, have they? No. And so last year was the first year my mum actually got involved because they've now got like a garage gym. But we give her 50 points because she makes the dinner. So yeah. we're like, you just have to be able to get 50 points. You may eat the food you provided. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but to be fair, she benched like 45. Fair. Which for 50 year old, year old woman who doesn't really gym, that's good. Ooh. Love that. Yeah. I'm so glad I'm never going to do Christmas at all. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. I would never eat. <laughs> <Could> never <invite laughs> There's not around. a chance I would get a look in at any yeah. of the food. I don't think I would either with these shoulders these yeah. days. No. So. And last year I had COVID, like, got released like the day before and I was just feeling rough doing it as well. I was like, I'm just getting 100 points. I'm, I'm not winning this year, like, not even going for the win. But yeah, we always had a big debate because my brother always wins because he's gym bunny. And... Um, he always used to go last, so he knew what he had to get so that he Smart. could only... Say he had to do, like, 10 press-ups, he'd only do that. But now we've said he has to go first, so at least he has to set the total. So in case he panics, he might actually max out on his press-ups because we joke with him, like, oh, yeah, I've been benching, like, 110 now. I'm coming for you because he does, like, 140, which is obviously I'm never going to do. But So we make him go first now, which is good. Wow. Yeah. Okay. None of those things. No, no fitness. No, thank you. No workout. Nothing on the farm. No. All no. just food related for us. Nice. A walk, if you know. Oh no, that's classic, too far. Classic family walk, but no. Just out in the country lanes. Yeah. Just lots of food. We go pretty big at Christmas on food, so it's always quite nice. Well, I'll um, be uh, outside of signal reception on yeah. the coast of South yeah. Africa. Yeah, we'll ring you in and you can Skype your bench <laughs> over here. I'll, I'll be wearing shorts and T-shirts uh, nice. over Christmas I this know. year. Yeah. So you'll have to film the bench press Christmas uh, extravaganza for us. Yeah. Make it a live broadcast event, please. Well, the people every year are like, can you just do a Facebook Live? And I'm like, no. <laughs> just pop the phone. Instagram Live. Yeah, <laughs> pop, pop the phone on a shelf close by. Just leave it on live and then it'll take care of itself. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> but it's so Thinking funny because we wind each other up because you get like, even you get nervous even doing it, even though like there's nothing really to be nervous about, but we just wind each other up. So it's like quite a tense atmosphere. <laughs> it's, not, it's not like a fun bench press. It's like tense and it's like, oh, he's going to bottle it. He's going to like try and wind each other up. So yeah, it's quite funny. I, th I feel like there is, there is a ton of interesting directions this could take and yeah. we need to develop. Some sort of fundraiser around it. For yeah. <laughs> My brother wants to get like a WWE belt so that he that can you like, win. Yeah. <laughs> but I said you buy it and we can have it. But yeah. Extra bit of uh, Christmas pudding for yeah for the winner. Maybe yeah. More pigs and blankets. Yeah, that double fine already. Supply. Amy's eating them all, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. A year's supply of pigs and blankets. <laughs> yeah. Whenever I want pigs and blankets, that will be provided, yeah. Okay, well, the light has run out on us. Um, they are covering the pitch here to ensure that they protect it and look after it well enough. Uh, you guys stay warm um, and, and keep enjoying the pigs and blankets. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> good luck with the juggling act. It was good to see you again. And you. We've been the good, the scars and the rugby, minus Mo. She'll be back next time, though, uh, in partnership with Vodafone. This is a Folding Pocket production produced by Shara Kilgallen.